What's going on guys? Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're doing the biggest comparison video that I think everybody wants to know. That is the 42 inch LG C2 OLED versus the 50 inch LG QNED. 4K, 120 hertz, Side-by-side -side comparison, we'll do gameplay and all. 42, 50. Let's do it. All right guys, you know Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. If you were following me, you would have seen everything. You will see. Everything that I do from arcade builds, virtual pinball, anything gaming related, also family time with the kiddo and such. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow all the socials. It's in the link tree. There's a link in the description. It says link.tree. Click it and then it shows you all the socials and also the website and YouTube. That's where you're seeing me at. Follow up. That's always going to be my intro. I have to also keep in mind that there are new viewers. So if you are new, thank you for watching the video. I hope you subscribe and such. To my OGs, thank you for always putting up with that little two minute intro. But on this one today, I'm really excited. I'm doing this video for me, but I'm also doing it for the VPMO community. They didn't ask for this video. It's just, it's something that me being in the VPMO community for four years now, I feel like it's discussed a lot. It's kind of like, I don't want to say the word argument, it's talked a lot about people compare and people have like, oh, this is too big. We're going to be looking at a 42 inch pinball machine versus a 50 inch pinball machine, but mostly talking about the screens. Now, yes, keep in mind, there are more screens than just these two here. Some people might say this is a stupid comparison. Why we've been doing this. You don't even have the ROG Strix 244 Hertz. This is a waste of my time. No, I don't have every screen, nor have I experienced that. I right now have the opportunity though, to put these two customers build side by side, which have two different screens, two totally different types of screens and sizes. And why not make a video to help you make a decision? I'll go over quickly these two specific builds here. As you can see, one of them is fully complete. That's gonna be created tomorrow. This one right now just got artwork approved, so I'm waiting for the artwork vinyl on this. Again, I have a quick time to put these side by side. We're gonna turn the lights off, I'm gonna remove the glass, and we're just gonna do a visual comparison of these two screens, which again, for me, in the V Pinball community, and I see on the Facebook groups, people are talking about screens. They want the newest and the best screen, 4K versus 1080p, which in all honesty, that argument's already done. Go 4K. Right now, I originally had a 60 hertz screen, I have a 120 hertz, and it is mind blowing the difference. So I always suggest 120 hertz. Yes, now there are companies that have the 144 hertz or the 240 hertz. If you have the money for it, then don't even watch this video, go get that 240 hertz display. Now for the people that don't know me, I am Big VP Game Case Arcades. I do have my own personal virtual pinball machine that I built from the ground up with MDF board and all that. That's about three years old. It's almost four years old in August. If you watch my videos, you can go back. I dubbed it the Simpsons Virtual Pinball Party. That is my personal build. That is a 50 inch screen, 32 inch back glass, and a 20 or 22 inch DMD. I'm drawing a blank right now. but. Yes, you can go back and see my personal build. So I've been around several V-Pins, all of them my personal ones that I have built, but I am no stranger to the game or noob to the game. Now, if you really know me, you would know that about four months ago, three or four months ago, I actually re-overhauled the guts of my virtual pinball machine by getting number one, a new PC, and I also upgraded the screen. I personally have a 50 inch QNED in my virtual pinball machine. So I am no stranger to the QNED. I do have the opportunity of building this 42 inch C2 OLED. And I'm gonna give you my brutal honest opinion. I'm gonna say which one is better 
because honestly they are both amazing displays. Basically, in summary, with the side-by-side -side, and I will even show you the settings. I went into the TV settings and adjusted. I feel like I got this screen, the 50-inch QNED, almost dialed in exactly to look like the OLED. Now again, this isn't going to be a review, it's just going to be my personal opinion. I've played with my personal 50-inch QNED now for about three months, so my eyes are used to it. My eyes are not used to a 42-inch screen, number one. I've always had a 50-inch. Before my upgrade, I did have a BS Samsung, which was 60 hertz 4K, and I can tell you off the bat, going from this for, for the 60 hertz to the 120, that already blew my mind. The biggest thing also I wanted out of my display, I wanted the blacks to be truly black, meaning that LED should turn off. And yes, the QNED does that along with the OLED. Now I'm gonna say it like a broken record, I have the 50 inch QNED. I've had it for about three months now. This video is not for me to say to you, yes, that screen is better than this screen or this and that. It's not meant for that. I'm simply just putting these side by side just so you could visually compare it. Again, OLED versus the QNED. My main focus for my screen when I was upgrading it, aside from the 120 hertz, because honestly, if you are not playing in 120 hertz, it is mind blowing, the smoothness of it. If you're able to play on a screen with 144 or 240, wow, I could only imagine. I have not experienced that, so I can't speak of that, but I know from 60 hertz to 120 hertz, it is a game changer. Now it's more about, hey, OLED versus the QNED. Again, I'm not gonna make the call and say this one is better than that. You can make the call on this video. I just hope that the actual comparison comes out pretty good. I'm basically gonna be putting the camera right in the middle, up as high, pointing down. I'm gonna launch probably about five or six tables just to have it stand alone, we'll play on both tables and then you can make the judgment from there. Now you can go ahead and do your homework and do a quick Google search of OLED versus QNED and all that. Like I said, I had the opportunity of having these side by side. I actually went and into the settings and adjusted the numbers to get like the colors and all that to almost be identical. I feel like they are very, very, very close. I'm not talking about NVIDIA control panel and doing that, um, uh, what's the word, display brightness to 55% and vibrance. I'm not talking about that. These are identical machines as far as NVIDIA settings. But the actual screen settings, taking the LG remote, going to settings, and then advanced picture settings, that's where I feel I dialed it in and it looks very, very, very similar. Now again, long story short, I have my 50 inch QNED. I am going to be keeping my 50 inch QNED. I'm not looking at an OLED. If I was going to rebuild, I would probably look into an OLED. You could take that info as you will. But later on, we're gonna be talking about the pros and the cons. Big one is pricing, money. OLED is money. Now real quick, I'll talk about the actual build itself. Again, this is Hogwarts Magical Pinball, the 42 inch, 32 inch back glass, 17 inch DMD. This one right here is gonna be a Star Trek theme table, 50 inch QNED, 32 inch back glass, 17 inch DMD. This one does have the special DMD display with the statues and the figurines. This one is gonna have the Stern style DMDs with the LED rings and the Stern mesh grills. Waiting on vinyl, and then I can finally do the adjustable LEDs on that. This one does have more toys than that. This does have a knocker on it. it does have two beacons, although this one has beacons hidden inside. And this does have the five flasher bar above. When I do these video comparisons though, when I do the actual gameplay, I'm turning everything off. LED matrix off, this way nothing kind of changes the screen look and all that. I will launch in the beginning one table, just so you can visually see the LED matrix. So you might also look at this video as like, do I want to go 42 on my pinball machine or should I go 48 or 50 inch? The one thing I'll quickly note about the LED matrixes on a couple of tables, it looks like the bigger the matrix, the more features it has versus the 42. One table, and I'll probably launch it as the first table or a second table, 
is Star Trek. This was a Star Trek themed table. I loaded up Star Trek to show the customer the progress. And what I did notice is that the LED matrix here actually spelled out the word enterprise, but it doesn't do that on the 42. But again, that's nothing. If you are thinking about, should I go 50 inch? If should I go 42? Many people, the big argument, this is too big. This is way bigger than an actual pinball machine. I said it in this video's overview. This right here is replicating a standard pinball machine. Stern, you want to talk about Guns N' Roses and uh, the new TMNT and the Foo Fighters. That's what that is. This right here is mimicking a wide body pin. Valley's Williams wide body. So we're talking about cabinet sizes and all that, but the big thing, remember, me personally as a builder, I build a cabinet around the screen. That 42 inch OLED is almost bezel-less. The only thing that that thing has is a quarter of an inch of a TV sensor on the bottom of the screen. Everything else is a very skinny bezel, paper thin bezel. Whereas this 50 inch QNED, it actually has an inch and a quarter on the bottom of the screen. That is like, it's a black bezel underneath the screen along with the TV sensor. Now again, like I said, I built these cabinets around the screen. This has a bezel of an inch and a quarter. That means I have to add an inch and a quarter on the opposite side, the top of the TV, to make sure that this is centered. Same thing with the C2. I had to add a quarter of an inch. So I measured out these cabinets real quick and you could do a quick Google search on what is the size of a wide body and all that. Just keep in mind though, again, this is a little bit wider because of the bezels I had to do. This cabinet right here is about 23 and a quarter wide. This one right here is 28 inches. So you're almost five inches different. Now for me, that five inches means 2.5 inches here and 2.5 inches there. Virtually, reality, really, this cabinet doesn't have to be 28 inches if I didn't add that inch and a quarter. So you could drop it down to whatever this 26 and three quarters. So again, some people go, oh, this is too big and it's too, it's too big. And it's, let's be real. I mean, you're talking 2.5 inches on each side. It's, it's not that big of a deal. So if you're like me, I went with the 50 inch because I think bigger is better and I like bigger and that's what I did. Now though, talking about my personal pin, my personal pin doesn't have this inch and a quarter on the top. Again, I built my cabinet around a Samsung 60 hertz screen, which was the TU 7000. Get that at like BJ's for like 300 bucks. I luckily was able to swap it out. So yes, on my pin, the left side of the screen, I do see the left bezel. Whereas on the right, I see no bezel. So technically, on my pin, my TV is not centered. But like I said, these pins are different because I added the inches to make sure it is centered. Now where you are, you can see, you know, this table, obviously 50 inches, it is a little bit longer. I right now, overall, I'm at 53 inches long on the 50 inch cabinet. And as far as the 42 inch cab, I am 46 and a half long. The only little statement I do want to make about why it is long, it's because of the addressable LEDs. I added length so I could have the LED matrix there. And I also have half of an inch open in the front of the cabinet for quick disconnects on the side rail. So length, width, depth, for me personally, I build these custom made to order. You just have to keep in mind though, if you do add these toys, we have to adjust. Enough talking. Let's take the glass off. Let's compare. All right, so first table we will load up is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I'm loading this up because this table is Harry Potter themed. I figured why not? I have not launched that this table on the 50 inch QNED. So again, I basically color graded it. I did the settings side by side with the forbidden table, which will launch later on. As you can see though, not every table is built the same. Not to mention some of the VPX tables have like the LUTs and stuff. Uh, basically when it comes to the LUTs, you know, the QNED sometimes looks better than the OLED and the OLED looks better than the QNED. But again, I went with the forbidden table because there was no LUTs for that table. Same thing here, this table does not have any LUTs. And you can kind of see, in my opinion, I got that 50 inch to look almost like the 42 OLED. 
I'm gonna press start. This way at least the screens look the same. You know, because when it's like in a track mode, this is green and that's blue. This way you can kind of see it. Again, 42, 50. Take a look at the back here, along the back there. I'm gonna just launch this real quick. We'll just let the balls kind of run around. And then I'll actually play a table and such. We'll do one and one, so. And now again, this is a table that doesn't have any LUTs. Again, I did not test this table here. Since I'm at the 42, I'll play the 42 real quick. And I'll just launch the ball on the 50 inch, just so we could just kind of let it rock. And then when that ball drains, then I'll stop playing here. And yes, I know I have the matrix on and all that. Oh, good save. Again, I have KL25Z, so I do have the nudge and the tilt and all that here. That ball drained. So we're gonna run over real quick to the 50 inch. We'll let this drain. No way for that. Oh, all right, shoot that. Again, both tables do have the nudge in it, so as you can see, I was able to nudge out from that outer lane. Not too bad, just looking at it like in this state here, it is very close, very, very, very close. Granted, yes, so I'm gonna now point out some things that I personally see that you might not see in the camera, but I see, for example, the rear there, I could see the green hedges. This right here, I could see it. It's brighter there than here. Uh, let's see, what else do we see? Let's just launch the attract mode that throws it off. Let's just leave it like that. Um, Harry. Harry right here looks very good. This one looks a little bit saturated or like, yeah, I'm going to say saturated where it looks kind of more tanner. But again, that's something where you could kind of fine tune in the settings. Like this here, this looks the same. Those skulls there. I'm going to make sure that I don't stand in the way of the camera. Um, even here, like the T and the P. It's very close. Like I said, I, I dial. I feel like I dialed in, and it's very close. Very similar. In this situation, I don't think you could really totally see a major, major difference. You don't. This to me is almost identical. You might see him a little bit brighter than here. That you might be able to play around with the back, uh, the backlight LED brightness. But this is an example of. These are equal to me now. This is almost identical. The OLED, yes, I would probably say. It's just something about like, like the roundness and the edges and the, it's something like that. That's what I'm seeing with the OLED. Let's do another table. All right, next one up, we'll launch Junkyard. It's not a race um, for this, but I just launched this and I realized that this is a table that has LUTs. And sure enough, this had a LUT that wasn't the same as this LUT. It was different LUTs and it looked way different. So now I'm relaunching it with the same LUT. This is the Schizo Mod LUT that's active on this, okay? Not too bad.
Now keep in mind, again, I don't have the plunger set up on this. I'm running pin vol on this. That's why you hear SSF here and not here. I have the volume low here and all that. So we'll press start. And yes, like the alley, sometimes you're gonna get that with the plunger, that's okay. Let's rock. Color DMD, I have to update my DMD extension for this pin here, but color DMD is on that. I'll play the 50 inch while I'm here. Again, the beauty is that 120 hertz screen. That is just great. Let's go to the 42. Wow, outer post killing. Outer lane, outer lane is killing it. Let's watch that. I mean, all in all, it's very close. It's very close. I'll be honest, well, I'm gonna wait for this bowl to drain uh, to get out of a track mode because, not out of a track mode, but in a track mode. So let's watch that one. Gonna wait for that one to go and then we're gonna just cycle through the LUTs real quick for junkyard. So I mean off the bat with the attract mode, it looks good. Like they both look good. Again, QNED, the 42 inch C2 OLED. It's like for example, like look at the toilet. Like the toilet is what yes, I do keep the yellow stickers on, the customers will peel that off so they get the feel of a brand new TV, but like the toilet there, you can see. Um, what else? The dog here looks okay. This one looks like like this guy here. I feel like the, like he's more colorful here than here. It's it's on and off. But now the big thing is like if I go and change the light, like let's say like that. This looks way different than that. Could even go to a different one. Let's see. Let's try this one. What was that? Warm fleet. Let's try that. So that's after the black and white. So I think I said like base or something like that. So let's go real quick and swap. Ah. There. See, that's the thing. Some of these tables have LUTs. And if I was adjusting the table with this LUT, if I was doing the settings here, I would be screwed. Because <laughs> this now looks, this looks different. Like, I don't like this. I'm not a fan of this look. This look does not look good. If I go to default, that's default. Very close. They both look great. Does this look clearer than that? No, these look exactly the same. As far as like the play card, exactly the same. Again, the big thing that I did well with my QNED was the black. I wanted that black to be black. It's gotta be off. And as you can see, it is off. All right, so next we're gonna launch the Forbidden Table. I wasn't gonna launch it, but I have to launch it. This way you could see what I did. Again, I color graded it according to the Forbidden Table. There's no LUT on this table, and as you could see, it's very, very close. It's very similar. I hope you could see that. It's very similar. I loved how this is. I got so excited when I got this. I took pictures of the actual picture settings and then I went down to my pin and matched it. In a track mode right now, it looks, it looks great. Like, I, I love this. When I saw this, I was very happy. I was like, oh, my QNED could do the OLED. Looks all good. Now keep in mind, I know, I know, I know I have to do the minor touching. I'm gonna press start, the ball is gonna bounce in the in the lane. I know I have to fix the jitter. 
Don't flame me in the comments. Let's press start. I'll just let the balls roll. I'll put it 50 inch because I'm here. I'll let this go. Slimers out. Again, both tables have SSF. They both have shakers. Shaker. Cool. Let's go to the 42. Oh. Again, got leaf switches. Slimer's still out over there. <laughs> Summer's like, hey. That's all I missed. Congrats, thank you. I mean, it, it, look, it looks great. Let me try to get Slimer mode on this while he's out there. Again, I know, don't flame me. I'm gonna leave Slime around. I'm gonna try to get him here. Alright, so we got Slimer's out on both. Just kind of see that. I know, even though that's making an annoying noise. Not too bad. I mean, again. Very close. There you go. Boom. Let's get rid of that ball and we'll call it on the next one. Yeah, come on. I mean, again, it's very, very close. Very similar. Yes, don't flame me in the comments. I know I have to fix the jitter. So relax. But awesome. It looks great. Love it. Next one. So we'll launch real quick, Arabian Nights. I always, I love this table because like 4K display, Totan, it's a beautiful table. So right now, I never launched this table, but it looks like, it looks like there's a LUT. It's like a major difference, right? Am I, am I seeing that? It looks like, yeah, of course, there's a LUT. So we're gonna do this, Totan 2022. Come around. Yeah, see? Totan 2022. So those are now are the same exact LUTs. Looks good. Like I said, I probably could bump up the backlight LED on this, but it looks really good. And again, for me, when I'm playing, I want to make sure that I could actually read the table. And also keep in mind, yes, VPX, you have the day and night slider. I'm not worried about that. It's more about these LUT tables. But when I'm playing, like I'm playing cue ball wizard now, the girl yells out, like, hit the corner pocket. And I'm like, where's the corner pocket? As long as I can read the wording, I'm okay. Even the, the, the cards here, all legible. Again, 50-inch QNED, the 42-inch OLED. And yes, please, I know this one, I don't have my plunger, like, set up. It doesn't, it's, I don't have it hooked up. So it, right now, the balls are just bouncing in the alley, like you can see there. Add some coins. And I have to adjust like the jitter inside of my pinscape. Don't worry, I will get that. But at least let's we'll launch these together. And I did turn off the DOF links and I turned off oh, the LED matrix. 
I drained that, so I might as well drain. I'll do it one more time. We'll do it at the same time. I can at least hit the right flipper on both. <laughs> I mean, very similar. They look great. It always feels weird playing without Doff. But this is night mode. Oh, I drank. I'll play one more here because I know that the pinball is just going to bounce. Let's see? Kind of gets annoying, so I'll do one more. I'll actually play this round here because it's the last ball. Again, 120 hertz screen. It's just a must. It looks, oh God. <laughs> it looks great. On both screens, the 120 hertz, that ball, it looks great. So this is already drained, awesome. Let's go next. Let's do the 42 inch. Oh, I have a third ball here. Cool. So I don't have to put any money in. Here we go. Again, I turned off the matrixes and doff links. Oh man. It's just like how I play in real life. Let me just try to put coins in this. I do want the flashers to stop, so let's see. I'm gonna have to just hold this in my hand. <laughs> this way I could have it stop bouncing. Let's do one more quarter on this. Let's rock. Shooting star is lit. Cool. So the next table. All right, next up we got Star Trek, the next generation. This is gonna be a Star Trek pin. I figured why not launch it. I also did reactivate the LED matrices and DOF links because this table, this bigger one has more LED addressable stuff than that. Meanwhile, keep in mind it is the same DOF config tool setup. So real quick, we'll take a look at it in a track mode. I originally was trying to, I started with this table. Um, trying to color match it here and I couldn't get it. The big thing if you notice real quick, like you could see these three green things compared to the QNED. Honestly, that was it. Like I was so focused on that because you could see the circle here and you really can't see it here. I was just so focused on that. But other than that, this is very, very close. It's, it's very close. Put some coins in. And I'll show you the LED matrix. So we'll start. As you can see, I press start, ball's there. This one says engage. So maybe because I have a bigger LED matrix. Try to play both. Oh, there goes one. Okay, search the galaxy. That one started. Then we have the fire. Oh, <laughs> I actually fired good too. Oh, down the pipe. <laughs> Again, very, very similar, very close. I'll do one more, we'll launch it together. I have the keyboard next to me.
Oh. Awesome. I'll do one more. This is Cactus Canyon. I love this table. This is one of those tables though that it's just like, you might have to play with the day and night slider. It's just one of those tables that are dark. Um, I don't remember who made this table. I don't think it's a VPW table. Uh, there is no LUTs on it. Um, but I forgot who it's the most recent, you know, Cactus Canyon that probably came out a couple of, you know, months ago, the mod, I should say. Um, but like I said, this is one of those tables where it's like, it's darker there than here. But that again, I would probably say if you play around with the day and night slider, you could bring it up to like the OLED kind of coloring. Uh, brightness that's that's really what I'm getting at it's mostly here see this keep out the keep out here area here by my viewing angle here it's like it's just very dark here so this is one table that I would say looks great on the OLED and I'm just I'm really aiming like here everything else looks great on it it's just some of the really dark areas maybe I have my black set too low and I should bump it up a little bit but all in all who doesn't like some cactus kind of? Oh, I have the keyboard here, so I'll at least try to play that with the keyboard. We'll go one more time. Oh, this is a hard one. Why? <laughs> no, down the pipe. It's all right. Collect your bouncy. Oh, and we got, uh, <laughs> I got quick draw in here. I love that drain. I love quick draw. That's what's great with this table. Oh, too soon, Vic. Bring it back, bring it back. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Drain it. Let's go back to the 15 and play that. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I should have nudged. <laughs> I have a nudge block. If you watch my stream, you'll know I have a nudge block. Lock is lit. Beautiful. Awesome. So as you can see, and I will do it, I promise, don't worry, so we were waiting for it. At the end of the video, I will show you the actual picture settings, all the numbers down the list to get your QNED to look just like this one here. Again, very similar. Very, very, very similar. Now, let's be real. Let's be serious. Let's be honest. Let's take a look at the price difference of these TVs. So now before we even talk about price, we have to keep in mind a couple of things, okay? Number one, we have two different TVs. Not, not just size, but we are talking OLED versus a QN. It's two totally different TVs. And in all honesty, this, if you were in my shoes, this would determine which one I would get because listen, money is money, okay? Let's just take a look real quick at the pricing today. I'm not looking at any sales. I don't want to talk about refurbished stuff just yet. I'm talking about today. Today is May 1st. It's going to be May. Okay. If I go to Best Buy right now 
That 42 inch C2 OLED is a thousand dollars. It's $9.99. It's a thousand dollars. So this doesn't include tax and all that. That TV right there is a thousand dollars. If I look up the 50 inch QNED TV, please hold as we wait. The 50 inch 80 series QNED 4K is $599. It's $600. It is $400 cheaper yes it is qned yes it is a bigger screen now let me bring you back let me bring you back a quick second okay remember what i said in the earlier video my personal pin i had a samsung tu 7000 series bj's 60 hertz tv okay if i wanted to get that tv today it is a 320 dollars tv 320 bucks versus 599.99 I would I would get this. I am getting this because it's 120 hertz. Just that alone I'm I'm jumping on that board. Not to mention again, you're talking 599 and 320. It's a $280 difference on the TV. This TV versus the 42 inch OLED though is four hundred dollars now like i said some people go well you know what four hundred dollars i'd rather have that i'm okay with the 42 inch i'd rather jump there and go there and then if you're like me four hundred dollars is a lot it's a lot now let's take it a step further because honestly as you can see the oled it performs it's good it's a great tv but the qned honestly it's there it is it is a neck and neck battle again in my shoes i would rather pay six hundred dollars and have a bigger screen than the thousand dollar price tag on an oled let's now up it a little bit though let's take a look real quick at this let's look at a 48 inch c2 oled from best buy why can't i see a price on this tap to view price it's nine nine it's it's nine hundred dollars eight ninety nine it is nine hundred dollars for a forty eight inch c2 oled six hundred dollar qned nine hundred dollar forty eight inch oled that's not too bad is there now a 50 inch i don't think there is a 50 inch c2 oled and granted that best buy thing it does say it's on sale for eight ninety nine no there is no 50 inch there's a 55 inch but not a 50. so a 48 inch c2 for 8.99 again 600 900 300 300 dollar difference now some of you might say oh well vic you know i'm looking at your video the 50 inch it looks like it's stretched out in all honesty, you could always you could always do that offset, that X and Y scale thing, but I don't see that big of a deal. I like it. I love it. Again, now you have to kind of sit down and say to yourself, well, do I really want to pay that much for a screen? Take a look at me. Let's let's take me for example. I'm gonna be the perfect example. Let's take me. I have right now a QNED. I had that Samsung, and I'll be honest, I was very lucky to sell that Samsung on Facebook Marketplace. And I, I, sell, I sold it pretty good. I got, I would say I got about 200 bucks for it. So I only had to pay 400 and change for my QNED instead of the 600. Now, do I want to sell my 50 inch QNED and get a 48 inch C2 OLED? And what was it that we were saying? I paid 600, I now have to pay 900. Do I want to do that? No. No, I wouldn't. I don't want to do that. I, I, I would rather keep my QNED. I like my QNED. The main reason I am saying that is I am lucky to get the amount of hours I am to play. If you're going to play this probably every day for like five hours a day, I would say splurge and get the OLED. Me personally, I would get the 48 inch OLED. 42 is nice, it's beautiful. I like the cabinet size. If you're gonna do a brand new cabinet, a 42 is great. I would probably go with a 48 inch OLED. But again, keep in mind, 
it's money. Now, real quick, is I do want to talk about refurbish and sales and all that. If you've been watching the channel, I actually have to make a video. If, I should say if you've been watching my Instagram. Um, I do have a open box refurbished 42 inch C2 OLED on my actual gaming desk, like my main gaming battle station, I call it, rig. I use that every day. Whether I'm playing games, I'm video editing, I'm doing photo stuff, I use that every day. Now the catch is this. I did buy that off of Woot, which is a Amazon refurbished thing. That C2, I spent 600 bucks. 9.99 new, 600 bucks refurbished. And I'll be honest, I did get that on slip deals. If you look at the comment section, people were like, either theirs came broken, damaged, burn in. I probably got very lucky. It did come in a generic box. But I said to myself, I said, listen, I'll take that risk. And at that time, the 42 inch OLED was $1,200. So to me, it was half off. Again, I'm talking now, if I'm looking at it right now, the 48 inch OLED wouldn't even fit in my cabinet. I would have dead space, which is already an eyesore to me. But it is not worth me selling my QNED for, I don't know how much I could get. And then, you know, investing another $900 on the 48 inch OLED. It's not worth it to me. So with that, I don't know, take, take with that what you will. I love my QNED. I love it. I love my pin. It works out exactly what I need it for. And as you can see, it works. Before I say goodbye though, you guys are just waiting to see the numbers on this. Let's do the settings. All right, here we go. So again, we have the 50 inch QNED. I go into settings. Obviously, this is in that game optimizer mode. So what I will do is I will go to game optimizer just so you can see all the screens. I'm gonna go through each and every screen. So here we go off the bat. Standard, off, dark room mode is off. Make sure you guys can see. I'm gonna go slow. This is like your main area here. Okay, we're gonna go up to the picture. Black stabilizer, white, 10. Contrast 80, black level. I'm gonna be better off like just pausing because I really don't wanna, I talk too much. But we're gonna go to the advanced picture settings now. This is what really matters the most. So picture, brightness. And as you can see, like I said, the panel brightness I have at 50. Contrast 80, black level 25, gamma 1.9, video range auto, LED dimming off, motion eye off. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go to color. Color I didn't really touch much, maybe the color depth I did touch. Color depth 55, tint zero, color gamut dynamic. We'll go into white balance. I didn't touch anything really here to be honest. Zero, two points high, zero, zero, zero. That's it. We're gonna go back, back. Clarity. The sharpness is at 25. Everything else here is off. True motion is off. That is it. That's it. If I go into advanced settings, nope, I already did that. Yep, we're good. So again, my select mode is game optimizer. Not vivid or anything like that. Aspect ratio is original. Yep, we're good. Again, if I go to settings, you see here, dark room, game optimizer, standard, and yep, there you go. So you guys, if you do have a QNED, you can have those numbers and you will match almost identical to the OLED. Well guys, on that note, there you have it. The QNED versus the 42 inch C2 OLED side-by-side -side comparisons along with the settings for the QNED to get it almost exact. If you got anything out of it, listen, if you have the money, I would suggest the OLED. If you're like me and I don't have the money to just kind of spend it away on a pinball machine that I am hoping to get a couple of hours out of the weekend, the QNED at the price point 
It's a no-brainer. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades, Cactus Cat.